Welcome to Medical Specialists Associates Educational Series on Topics in Critical Care Medicine. I'm Christopher Voss, MD, MS, FCCP, Board Certified in Anesthesiology, Critical Care, and Neurocritical Care Medicine. Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease, COPD, remains a leading cause of morbidity and mortality globally. It is a heterogeneous condition characterized by persistent, often progressive airflow obstruction and is influenced by both environmental and genetic factors. Today, we will explore the latest evidence and recommendations from the 2025 Gold Report, highlighting key updates in the diagnosis, management, and prevention of COPD. COPD is a chronic respiratory condition marked by dyspnea, chronic cough, sputum production, and recurrent exacerbations. It results from airway, bronchitis, bronchiolitis, and alveolar, emphysema, abnormalities. The condition is driven by a combination of genetic predisposition and environmental exposures, such as tobacco smoke and air pollution, occurring over a person's lifetime. The diagnosis of COPD is confirmed by spirometry. A post-bronchodilator FEV1 FVC ratio of less than 0.7 indicates airflow obstruction, a hallmark of the disease. Emerging classifications include pre-COPD and PRISM, Preserved Ratio Impaired Spirometry for Early Identification of At-Risk Populations. Pre-COPD refers to individuals who have respiratory symptoms and or imaging findings suggestive of COPD without spirometric airflow obstruction, FEV1, FVC greater than or equal to 0.7. PRISM is characterized by a preserved FEV1, FVC ratio, but a reduced FEV1, less than 80% predicted. Both classifications help identify individuals at risk of progressing to full COPD, enabling earlier interventions. COPD is the third leading cause of death worldwide, accounting for over 3 million deaths annually. The prevalence is increasing, particularly in low- and middle-income countries, driven by factors such as continued exposure to risk factors and aging populations. In the U.S. alone, the annual economic burden of COPD is projected to reach $40 billion, with exacerbations accounting for the majority of healthcare costs. COPD pathophysiology involves small airway disease and parenchymal destruction, leading to reduced elastic recoil and persistent airflow limitation. Chronic inflammation, triggered by irritants such as cigarette smoke, causes structural changes and contributes to disease progression. Lung hyperinflation, both static and dynamic, contributes to dyspnea and reduced exercise tolerance. This is a key focus for therapeutic interventions aimed at improving patient outcomes. Spirometry remains the gold standard for diagnosis. Pre- and post-bronchodilator spirometry helps distinguish COPD from other conditions such as asthma. COPD is confirmed when the post-bronchodilator FEV1-FVC ratio remains less than 0.7, indicating fixed airflow obstruction. In asthma, significant reversibility is observed with an increase in FEV1 of greater than or equal to 12% and greater than or equal to 200 milliliters after bronchodilator administration. According to Gold, spirometry should be performed in patients with a history of risk factors, such as smoking or recurrent respiratory infections. Advanced imaging modalities and biomarkers, such as blood eosinophil counts, can help refine the diagnosis and guide therapeutic decisions. Examples of advanced imaging include high-resolution computed tomography to assess emphysema and airway wall thickening. Blood eosinophil counts greater than 300 cells per microliter are often used to guide the addition of inhaled corticosteroids in therapy. Bronchodilators, including long-acting beta-2 agonists and long-acting muscarinic antagonists, are the cornerstone of treatment. Recommended dosages include 1. Teotropium, long-acting muscarinic antagonist, 18 micrograms once daily via dry powder inhaler or 5 micrograms once daily via soft mist inhaler, 2. Salmeterol, long-acting beta agonist, 50 micrograms twice daily via dry powder inhaler, 3. Formoterol, long-acting beta agonist. 12 micrograms twice daily via dry powder inhaler or 20 micrograms twice daily via nebulizer. 
For patients with frequent exacerbations, inhaled corticosteroids, such as butasonide 400 micrograms twice daily, or fluticasone 500 micrograms twice daily may be added, particularly in those with elevated eosinophil counts. New therapies, such as ensifentrine, 2 mg twice daily via nebulizer, and dupilumab, 300 mg subcutaneously every two weeks, show promise and are included in the latest guidelines. Ensifentrine is a dual inhibitor of phosphodiesterase 3 and 4 with both bronchodilatory and anti-inflammatory properties. Dupilumab is a monoclonal antibody targeting IL-4 and IL-13 pathways, showing efficacy in reducing exacerbations in COPD patients with elevated eosinophils. Pulmonary rehabilitation, smoking cessation, and vaccination are critical components of COPD care. Emerging evidence supports the use of telerehabilitation and virtual patient follow-ups to enhance accessibility and adherence. The 2025 Gold Report introduces the concept of dysbiosis, highlighting the role of altered microbiota in exacerbations and disease progression. Dysbiosis refers to an imbalance in the microbial communities within the lungs, often triggered by smoking, infections, or antibiotic use. It can lead to increased inflammation and susceptibility to exacerbations. Management strategies include maintaining airway hygiene, judicious use of antibiotics, and emerging therapies targeting the microbiome. This emphasizes the importance of individualized treatment approaches. Cardiovascular comorbidities are common in COPD and significantly impact outcomes. Integrated care models that address multimorbidity are recommended. A COPD exacerbation is a worsening of symptoms that requires urgent medical intervention. When hospitalization is necessary, a structured treatment plan is essential. The recommended treatment plan includes 1. Oxygen therapy, target SpO2 of 88 to 92 percent. Systemic corticosteroids, prednisone, 40 mg orally once daily, or methylprednisolone, 20 mg IV twice daily rounded up from the technical equivalent of 32 milligrams for practical purposes. Two, treatment should not exceed five days. Three, bronchodilators, albuterol, 2.5 milligrams nebulized every four hours, ipratropium, 0.5 milligrams nebulized every six hours. Four, antibiotics, if bacterial infection is suspected. Azithromycin, 500 milligrams on day one, followed by 250 mg once daily for four days. Azithromycin is used for suspected bacterial infections and, in some cases, for its anti-inflammatory properties to reduce exacerbation frequency in select COPD patients. Amoxicillin clavulinate, 875 mg, 125 mg orally twice daily for five to seven days. Five, non-invasive ventilation. For patients with hypercapnic respiratory failure, consider BiPAP, often used standing at night and PRN during the day. Systemic corticosteroids are critical in managing COPD exacerbations. Prednisone PO 40 mg daily for 5 days or methylprednisolone IV, 20 mg twice daily is recommended. Prolonged steroid courses are discouraged due to the risk of complications, such as hyperglycemia, infections, and myopathy. Additionally, high doses of corticosteroids beyond those recommended, such as greater than 40 mg of prednisone PO or methylprednisolone IV 20 mg twice daily, have not been shown to provide greater efficacy in treating exacerbations and can increase the risk of adverse effects without added benefit. Prevention remains the most effective strategy for reducing COPD burden. Tobacco control measures, reducing air pollution, and improving access to clean cooking fuels are essential. Future research should focus on early disease identification, novel biomarkers, and personalized therapies. The integration of artificial intelligence and big data in COPD management holds great potential. COPD is a preventable and treatable disease. By implementing the latest evidence-based guidelines, we can improve patient outcomes and reduce the global burden of this condition. As critical care physicians, your role in early diagnosis and comprehensive management is pivotal. For more information about critical care medicine, please visit us on our website at www.medspecialists.net and subscribe to our YouTube channel.